Welcome to the Scottish Rite Journal podcast, an audio presentation of the Scottish Rite Journal, brought to you by the Supreme Council of the Scottish Rite, Southern Jurisdiction, Mother Supreme Council of the World. This week's article is Tolstoy, Masonry, and a Prophetic New Age by Brother Chris Rooley, 32nd Degree, KCCH, and comes from the January-February 2022 issue of the Scottish Rite Journal. The Supreme Council's New Age magazine, predecessor to the Scottish Rite Journal, presented a fascinating article in June 1918 entitled Loif Tolstoy, the 13th Apostle, by Dr. Henry Evans, 33rd Degree. This piece initially reads as a rather innocuous examination of Count Leo Tolstoy's life and perspectives on Christianity. Upon closer inspection, however, we gain some insight into the Russian writer's relationships with Freemasonry and his perspective on and prophecies of European affairs prior to the Second World War. Born on August 28, 1828, into an aristocratic family, Count Tolstoy, as Evans refers to him, exmatriculated from university without graduating in order to pursue a life of leisure, travel, and later a stint in the Russian army, Tolstoy's experiences during the Crimean War made a profound impact on the young man. He subsequently left the military and devoted his life to political movements affiliated with nonviolence. In 1869, Tolstoy published his masterpiece War and Peace, which chronicles Napoleon's invasion of Russia and life under the Tsars through the story of five aristocratic families. Curiously, Evans devotes a mere two sentences of Tolstoy's famous novel in the New Age piece, even though Freemasonry plays a prominent role in one protagonist's story. In the novel's fifth book, an aimless young count named Pierre Bezukhov meets a wandering traveler who, aware of the former's past exploits, admonishes Pierre. The traveler reveals himself to be a Freemason and initiates Pierre into the craft after the young aristocrat agrees to improve his life. Infused with newfound zeal, Pierre fully embraces the fraternity and its goal to mend the whole human race by furnishing in our members the models of veneration and virtue. He later refers to the institution as being liberated from governmental and religious fetters and its teachings of equality brotherhood, and love. As Pierre advances up the ranks, however, he confronts disillusioned Masons and soon discovers that his colleagues have not always upheld and propagated the fraternity's high ideals. When Pierre returns from a trip abroad renewed with fraternal spirit, he lobbies local Masonic leaders for reform. It is not enough to conceal our mysteries in the secrecy of our lodges, the young man declares, It is necessary to act, to purify men from prejudices, spread the rules which are in conformity with the spirit of the times, unite in indissoluble bonds with the wisest of men, boldly and at the same time wisely overcome prejudices, unbelief, and stupidity by those who are loyal to us men who shall be united by unity of purpose. Through Pierre's struggles, Tolstoy reminds the reader that even the most principled institution can become ineffective if its own adepts are not welcome to change. It should be noted here that Tolstoy was not a Mason, and that scholars have noted that contemporary Russian Freemasonry served as a suitable proxy for the Russian state and Orthodox Church. On numerous occasions, Evans notes, he offended the bureaucrats of Russia by his liberal ideas. Many of his writings, forbidden publication in Russia, were circulated in manuscript from hand to hand. Tolstoy eventually would shift his focus onto religion and his personal brand of Christianity. He abandoned art for art's sake, Evans continues, and devoted himself to the exposition of his faith, pouring forth in rapid succession such works as My Religion, The Kingdom of God, and What is Religion. His rhetoric alarmed the Russian political and religious establishment and, as a result, he was excommunicated formally from the country's Orthodox Church in 1901. Nevertheless, Tolstoy's pacifist message resonated with Russian and foreign intellectuals and found a voice in other publications. Similar topics eventually would appear in the New Age, especially after the end of the First World War. 
as governments and their citizens began critically to assess the war's aftermath. On October 7, 1914, the Supreme Council elected George Moore, 33rd degree, as its new Grand Commander. Under his stewardship, the New Age leaned into these topics and others by running pieces on pacifism, Americanism, and a reoccurring series on efforts to establish a federal department of education. This tonal shift perhaps is best exemplified on the magazine's masthead, which changed from a publication devoted to literature, science, and Freemasonry to Freemasonry and its relation to present-day problems. Evans concludes his own piece by retelling the story of Tolstoy's niece visiting her great-uncle in the autumn of 1910. When asked about his thoughts on the future, Tolstoy leaned back into his chair, closed his eyes, and began to expound upon the question. By 1915, he prophesied, a strange figure from the north, a new Napoleon, enters the stage of the bloody drama. He is a man of little military training, a writer, or a journalist. The end of the great calamity will mark a new political era for the old world. There will be no empires or kingdoms, but the world will form a federation of the United States of Nations. Evans ends his submission simply by asking the readers to interpret Tolstoy's vision for themselves, and we might see in Tolstoy's words prophetic hints of Nazi Germany, fascist Italy, and the Soviet Union, as well as federations such as a League of Nations and the United Nations. Evans' piece on Tolstoy and the New Age's approach in general define a pivotal moment whereby the fraternity responded to social and cultural shifts of the era. When the New Age's stewardship transferred from Moore to his successor John Cowles, 33rd degree, the publication shifted again and stressed practical concerns such as promotion of Americanism, good citizenship, and humanitarian service over the ancient Pythagorean mysteries of geometry. The New Age magazine and its successor, the Scottish Rite Journal, would continue to balance articles on civic concerns with essays on Masonic symbolism and philosophy throughout the remainder of the 20th century. Joining us now is Brother Chris Rooley. Hey Chris, really appreciate you taking the time to chat today. What was your inspiration for this article on Tolstoy and Freemasonry? Last year, um, Larissa Watkins, the librarian of the House of the Temple, and I actually went on a project to digitize the New Age magazine, the, the old publication of the Supreme Council. Um, and so, you know, it started out back in, I think, 1904, 1905. It started its publication run, and we had it for about close to a century. And so one of the things that um, drew my attention was the fact that from the, so the beginning of the of the publication it was on history it was on science and art and music it was sort of a, a hodgepodge of different articles and then of course masonry was somehow involved either the masons were doing the music the masons were doing the history stuff like that and so uh i was curious as we were going through the digitization process i found a couple articles including this article on Tolstoy called Tolstoy the 13th Apostle. And it was a little surprising to me because we don't really talk a lot about religion in these, you know, Scottish Rite Journal articles. We certainly don't talk about, you know, and, and especially Tolstoy wasn't even a Mason. So I was curious to, to figure out why, what's the connection here? And so as I'm doing a little bit more history on the publication, you know, the Grand Commander George Moore was one of the first editors he was really interested in applying the craft and using the craft for public good. And in fact, at one point, he moved the publication over to be like, this is not just a magazine on Freemasonry and science and art, but this is how do we apply Freemasonry to do a public good? And so one of these articles, like Tolstoy, the 13th Apostle, was on this uh, Freemason scholar who published this article on Tolstoy as a pacifist, Tolstoy taking Freemasonry and using Freemasonry and uh, applying some of the tools of Freemasonry towards bettering people's lives, bettering the government, perhaps establishing a new, you know, uh, government based on principles 
espoused by the Enlightenment era. And so this is certainly different, you know, 1901, 1914. I think the, the, published, the article was published 1913. What do the writings of Tolstoy tell us about how we can create a better society? What do, are there any Masonic parts of that? And, and what do they resonate with Freemasons? And so I just found that as an interesting article. We don't really write articles like that anymore. And, and it speaks to this branch of, uh, you know, George Moore, Grand Commander George Moore's interest in uh, finding articles, finding people that really pushed this type of discussion. Chris, thanks again for joining us and providing us with a great article. Any accompanying photographs or citations for this article can be found in the corresponding print edition. The Scottish Rite Journal is published by the Supreme Council of the Scottish Rite, Southern Jurisdiction, Mother Supreme Council of the World, Mark Dreisenstock, 32nd Degree, KCCH Managing Editor. I'm your host, Matt Bowers.